If you want to create designs based on women's vintage fashion, wow, have I got a resource for you. We're talking tens of thousands of high quality scans. Some are black and white, many are full color, and they're all free. These are all in the public domain. That means that there's no copyright restrictions on the images. You can use them as is, you can remix them, change them, sell them, put them in any personal or even commercial art project. This is a really popular niche. It's great for high-end art prints, apparel, print on demand, you name it. So let's explore the awesome world of vintage women's fashion. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into it here. We're on a page called archive.org. And what that is, is a site called the Internet Archive. It's a nonprofit library. Now, not everything on this website is public domain, but what I'm about to show you is. So I'm simply going to search in the little search window here, and I'm going to type in the delineator. It's kind of a weird name. And I'm going to hit go. What is the delineator, you might ask? Well, the delineator is an old magazine. And when I say old, I mean really old. 1899. 1932, that kind of thing. And we get a whole bunch of magazine articles back. And these things are almost like a catalog. There's like World War I vintage stuff. I'm just going to click one here completely at random. I'm going to click this one here. I'm just clicking the button. And what happens is the delineator now opens up. This one's from July 1896. Now you've got a couple options here on the screen. So over uh, I just happened to click on this and it goes to page 17, but you can go back a page here. So it's kind of like scrolls, right? Now you'll notice it says here page 12, page 10, of a thousand and twenty. These things are massive. It's like a catalog. I guess they, I don't know, man, they had lots of paper back in the olden days because this thing is huge. You can also click this little thumbnail button where there's four uh, boxes instead of two. So you can flip it. So this now becomes like a larger view. This has everything in it. If you click on any individual page, it will go to that page and it will rescan it or give you a higher quality. So it just takes a second to come in to focus. And now you can scroll down and you can see there's black and white images. You can also hit the little plus button here on the right and you can scan in as much or as little as, it ha as it'll allow. It'll kind of reprocess it. So these are three lovely ladies from the turn of the century. And, oh, there's even more down here. Dressmaking at home. And then you can just scroll down to the next page. There's lots of text as well. I'm going to go back to the four here. So this just gives you like a different view. And you can see here there's color scans, there's monochrome scans, there's black and white scans, and it just goes on and on. Remember, this is just one issue. There's like, I think on the digital archives here, there's like 35 of these issues. Each issue has hundreds and hundreds of pages and almost every page has illustrations. So if you want to see like a little creepy kid wearing his little Lord Fauntleroy outfit, there you go. Now it's going to gain, it's going to rescan it here or reprocess it. So it just takes a second. There we go. You can see it comes into focus here. So he's got his little sailor suit on. This is a little boy's midi suit, and then it gives you descriptions. So the reason I love this, not only is the quality of the scan high, but it gives you a description of what it is. So if you're making an art print, you could actually take this image and you could rewrite the description in Photoshop, Adobe Photo. You could even use Inkscape if you want it. And so these are great for fine art prints. They're good for things like vintage farmhouse bathroom or rec room. A lot of people like, you know, if you've got a sewing room, women's fashion stuff is really, really popular. We'll keep scrolling here and you can just see I'm not even one tenth of the way through this one magazine. Here's a lot of high end color photographs. This is just going to rescan or like it basically makes it a higher quality. You can see here, this is like watercolor vintage. 
the quality of this is really high. Now, again, these are scans of actual pages, so you're going to have to do some digital cleanup. So you can see here on the right hand or on the left hand side, you'll see there's the actual scan of the spine of the book. So this is not completely formatted where it's um, either flush or level. You'd have to monkey around with that a little bit. And this is just one page out of hundreds and hundreds of pages in this magazine. And if you want to save any individual image, you just simply right click it and you can open the image in a new tab. So that's what I'm going to do here. And then you get this image. Okay, so I'm going to veer into the world of copyright and public domain and it can be a little bit murky and here's an example. So I don't want to just gloss over this because some people get pretty bent out of shape about the rules. So here's the deal. I'm on the Internet Archive website, which is archive.org. Here's all the scans and as I scroll on down underneath, you're going to see it's got the usage rights. So the publication date is 1919 and what that means is that typically if something's published this long ago, it's in the public domain. So the usage, however, listed on archive.org says attribution non-commercial 4.0. And what that means is that there's no commercial use allowed on this image, on these images. So it's, it's complicated because this is, the contributor here is Cornell University Library. So when I go to Cornell University Library as a contributor, there are no known copyright restrictions in the United States on the use of these texts. So on the one hand, we've got Cornell saying, hey, we own the copyright and you can use it, but for non-commercial use. However, because of the age of the text, it says right here, there are no known copyright restrictions in the United States on the use of these texts. So use your discretion in my opinion, and I am going to take a stance here. I'm not going to be super wishy-washy. These are in the public domain. Okay, now if you don't want to use the Internet Archive's scans, there are other ones that you can use. So for example, there's Flickr albums. I'll put the links to these in the video description, but there's Flickr albums, for example. So you can take a look at Flickr albums that have the Delineation magazine. There's also on Wikimedia, for example, I've got Wikipedia here and we've got the Delineator. When I click on this, we can see down here at the bottom, I'll just click on the more details. And it says here this work is in the public domain in the United States because it was registered with the U.S. Copyright Office or published before January 1st, 1926. So I've got evidence here that this is in the public domain. There's also magazineart.org. There's a whole bunch of scans of covers here. There's multiple pages of it. There's also the Canadian Museum of History. They have some scans as well. These are PDFs. So I'm going to put the links to all of these videos in the video description below. I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you see this. Some people just completely freak out when they see this and they go, well, I'm not allowed to use it. These are in the public domain. Now someone else can make a copyright claim on it. However, enforcing it would be almost impossible, especially if you take an image from here and you use it in an art project. All right, I hope you found that helpful. I'm going to put the links in the video description below, and I'm also going to show you a couple mock-ups on what you can do with a few of these designs for t-shirts or fine art prints. Basically, you have two choices, big picture choices. One is you can use these as is. So basically, you can say, okay, I'm going to make a catalog page, like an art print based on this, or you could take the picture out of context and you could put a funny phrase or something underneath it. So I'm going to just show you a couple examples of both at the end of this video. Hope you guys found that helpful. As always, please like the video if you like it and please subscribe if you never want to miss an episode. Take care guys. Thank you so much for watching.